All right, so I'm just gonna go over a few examples of how to use the ramp generator and ramp mixer nodes. So first here we have a poly slice. Just start with a box and need to divide that box. Then we have our poly slice node. I'm not sure why it needs to have the subdivisions in the y-axis, but it won't work without it. Also be mindful of the amount of subdivisions that you do. Um, you need to have enough for some reason. Okay, so then the poly slice, I have that set up and then I have the remap connected to my ramp generator. Copy parameter and paste relative reference and that'll reference that parameter. So when I go here to my ramp generator, I can change the frequency of the sine wave and I get some pretty cool variation in my poly slice. Um, I've noticed that this is a bit buggy and can get stuck and not behave properly. So you may need to delete and recreate the poly slice node if that happens. All right, next example I have is just a subdivided grid with some noise applied, which is driving the Y position of each point. Okay, so again, we have our remap ramp and I have that linked to my ramp generator over here. And you can see some pretty cool results from that. So as you can see, this is just a really handy way to add a cool ramp that's just not really possible with the presets. So we can even go in here and make a random ramp, get different results. All right, last example we have, this one will demonstrate the ramp mixer. So with the ramp mixer, I have my first ramp, which is linked to this ramp generator. Second ramp is linked to this ramp generator. And then I need to select a method from this dropdown. And what this will do is it'll take the points in the first ramp and mix it with the second ramp with by whatever method we specified. So right now it's multiplying each of these values. And you need to note that the resolution of the first ramp is what's important. And so the resolution of the output ramp is going to be each point in here, output here, according to the value it finds in the second ramp. The resolution in the second ramp doesn't matter for the output. Okay, and we also have original weight. And what that'll do is the higher this original weight value, the lower the, lower the effect of the second ramp in the output. So I can keep going up and start to see just that sine wave, partial sine wave. Now for the ramp generator, um, there's, we have two types, random or sine wave. So the first, you wear the sine wave, we can affect the frequency of the wave. Lift is just adding values so that we don't go into the negatives. That's what you need. Amplitude, self-evident. We have the point count and notice, as I mentioned, that the resolution is very important. So even though we have a lot of details in the second ramp, they're not coming through in the final result because the resolution is too low in the original. Now you can set the resolution manually after the fact and you can get your details back. But it would be better in this situation just to start with a higher resolution. So this is just here if you need it. Okay, we can also do random. Now let's put our point count up. We can have a random seed, the range of the values, change that. <clears throat> we can change the interpolation type and these can give pretty different results. Cool. This next section will repeat ramp patterns from this first ramp. So let's go back to 
So let's make the resolution really low. And let's say, so I have this pattern and I'd like to repeat that pattern. So first you'll need to set it to active and then move this repetition slider and it should give you the ability to do some repetitions on this. So the, but these nodes over here is linked to the first one and not the second. So we're not seeing it in the viewport, but you can right click, copy parameter, and then paste it as a relative reference to one of these ramps. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off. All right, the second ramp just using random. I'm gonna change this back to sine wave. High resolution. I'm gonna make this look cool. So I'm gonna use uh, taper it to the top. And yeah, pretty neat result here. Hope you find this as a helpful tool in your workflow. Let me know if you have any questions or implementation ideas.